it's hump day. Hump day! <laughs> it's hump day. Hump day! <laughs> We're live. We're back on Hangouts, guys, because webinar hey. wouldn't even start for us today. So, anyway. Uh, hey, everybody. Bradley Benner here. It's Man of Mastery. This is the... Uh, <laughs> Hump Day Hangouts, episode 128. Today's March 19th, 2017. And we've got Chris, Hernan, and Marco on with us. Adam is off running in the woods again. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I think he was moving. <laughs> he was moving. Uh, is that what we're calling it today? <laughs> yeah, well, let's call it like that. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so, Chris, what's up, man? Doing good, right from a snowstorm here in Vienna. So. <laughs> Um, guys, um, hold on. I'm telling. Uh, I guess Marco and Hernan, you guys can chat for a minute. Sure. How are yeah, you, Marco? Um, I'm good, man. We got really bad electrical storms. My my electricity keeps coming in and out. If I drop off, the Google police didn't get me. The lightning <laughs> storm got me. So sorry about that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> We're starting to think this is kind of some kind of conspiracy since we launched, it's, you know, the battle plan. This is yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're teaching people how to rank and, and they don't like it. So they're trying to do everything they can to keep us off the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're making things too easy available out there. That's the thing. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully everybody refresh the page because on the um, event page, because you have to refresh the page for the new video to show up. I'll Unless Okay, you posted it already. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, guys, let's get into it. Um, I guess we got probably a couple of announcements. We can stay till the actual five o'clock mark today because we got started a few minutes early or late, guys. So, um, mm -hmm. but anyways, let's get into announcements. Hernan, what do we got? Yeah. Well, real quick, uh, one of the things, if you haven't already, we, su we strongly suggest that you get a copy of the Semantic Mastery, the SEO Domination Battle Plan that we launch on Monday. Right now, the price is unreal for the value that you're getting. And uh, basically, the coupon ends in, two, uh, I think it's going to end in two hours, if I'm not mistaken. And then it's going to double, more than double the price. Yeah. So go ahead, get it. I'm going to put the um, link on the event page. Uh, but it's basically battleplan.semanticmastery.com. Go ahead, download it. And you know we try to make a really concise a uh, simple guide, step-by-step -step, uh, document that you can come back over and over and over again, depending if you have H sites, new sites, YouTube videos, local websites, it's everything in there. The way we do it, the way we implement it, that's the main idea of the battle plan. So if you're looking for something simple, go ahead and get it. If you're looking for something more complex or you know, if you want more support, et cetera, et cetera, come join the mastermind. But that's basically the main idea of the battle plan. So There's a couple of things I want to mention about that. Number one is we had some people say, the battle, the the your your process can't be this simple. Well, actually, it is. Uh, it is. You know, that's that's <laughs> really what we do, guys, and that's why uh, you know I, I continually say on these something hangouts that I like easy. Don't overcomplicate shit, guys. If you want to make it complicated, then just you know I don't know stand on your head while you're doing it. I, I, I don't know. All I'm saying is those are the exact same services that we use, the same procedures, the process, the, in order, in the steps that we do it in, and it's not difficult. I mean, you know, we've got the infrastructure behind us, which is provided. It's available for you guys as well uh, for, to use the same services that we use. So I mean, again, it's you know some people say, well, it, it can't be that simple. Like it, it's just because I think by nature we as uh, SEOs and marketers typically want to overcomplicate shit. So uh, that's part of it. But the other thing is, and just very quickly, let me grab the screen. Um, I want to show something here. You guys are seeing my screen, correct? Yep. This is the bonus site, guys. Like you know, I think there's more value in the freaking bonus site than there is the actual PDF. <laughs> So I just wanted to point this out real quick. If you, uh, this is something that wasn't even mentioned on the sales page, but you get access to this bonus site that has uh, a ton of different bonus stuff in here. And the bonus webinar section alone is there's multiple webinars here, including one of our webinars that Marco just did recently on iframe and JavaScript secrets. That's a pay per view webinar of one hundred and forty seven dollars, and that's been included as well. And we've got um, a ton of different. Um, you know, there's case studies in here for Live Rank Sniper, for Rocket Video Ranker Pro, the Vmail Prospecting Course, 
uh, which is the basic course. I'm probably going to be doing a full blown course for that in the next couple months. But um, again, just wanted to point out, like you know, if for a twenty dollar PDF, uh, there's there's absolutely no reason why you guys shouldn't pick it up for the for the simplicity of it. Number one. And number two, because you get access to a bunch of amazing bonuses. Okay. Well, the, yeah. the bonuses are, that's the reason why it's going to $100 when it's all said and done. Because mm -hmm. it, it's worth way more than 100 bucks. But I mean, You're damn right we it want, is. We wanted to keep it accessible to, to all of our members and, and followers so, so that they could, they could actually have a plan that they could follow so that, to, to achieve their success. If you want, if you want to, to, to complicate things, I mean, I mean that that's fine, as Bradley said, but it it doesn't really need to be. All you have to do is just follow the step by step process. Uh, if you want to do more, then you're more than welcome to join Syndication Academy. You're more than welcome to come into the mastermind and ask us as many complex questions a, a, as you want, and we'll answer them. You have full access to us there, and if not, just follow the follow the training step by step. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Seriously, yeah. that's it. I love it yeah. when somebody analyzes the analyzes the plan and says, "Oh no, it can't be that simple. This must not work." <laughs> well, yeah. first, we can just try. On it, man. <laughs> yeah, so. and um, another thing that's worth mentioning is that the bonus site that you get for free uh, will be updated. You know, we have a bunch of case studies that are going to be uh, uploaded to the bonus site. So go ahead, order it now because again, it's going to a hundred bucks soon. Now you can get it for twenty dollars. It's it's crazy. So yeah. What's the coupon code again? Missile the launch. Coupon, yeah, it's missile launch. Thank you, Chris. It's missile launch, one word, and it's on the event page again, battleplan.semanticmonthly.com. That coupon is gonna be available for the next two hours, and then it's gonna more than double the price. So Okay, cool. All right, do we have any other announcements? Because if not, let's get into it. Let's, let's do it. All right, cool. Let's um, did, were we going to talk? We're not. We're not talking about the next webinar, are we yet, Marco? Uh, no, you could just tell them what it's going to be about. All right, we're going to do another webinar in the series, uh, Marco's series that you know we've done three now, and uh, we're about to do a fourth, which is going to be a structured data webinar, guys. Um, I don't. We scheduled it, but I don't know the date offhand. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be around April eighth. May a Monday. May, April 8th. May sorry, yep. May eighth. Monday or excuse me, Monday May eighth. You're right. I'm sorry. Usual usual time. It it it'll be then. If it changes, we have plenty of time to to let people know. Yeah, I'm, work, just, I'm working on that. You guys will get notifications via email and stuff for registration. So just want to let you guys know uh, that that's coming as well. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, I'm gonna grab the screen and we're gonna get into questions. It feels weird to be back in Hangouts, man. It feels kind of like home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? It's actually working. It's working, too. Right. Unlike Webinar Jam, for some reason. All right. Allah, or Allah, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Forgive me. Uh, he says, hi, everyone, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to be part of the Hangout. I'm quite new to SEO, and I have a question which might sound very basic. My question is, can I use a private home address for local lead gen? I believe we answered this question last week or the week before, but... Uh, it seems like I remember this question. Um, yes, of course you can use your private home address for lead gen. Well, I don't recommend doing it for like, you know, fake businesses or, or pseudo business or like what I, what I mean by guys, obviously I set up generic businesses, right? The generic lead gen funnels, um, landing pages, whatever you want to call them assets. And, uh, you know, but I don't register all of them to my home address, and I wouldn't recommend that you do that either. Go get a PO box if you're in the United States. Go get a PO box. I know some people say that's not working or isn't going to work anymore. You've got to. I, I covered this in a Facebook Live post recently, but <clears throat> I'm still able to get them to work. What happens is wh where the problem occurs is if you re try to register multiple um, businesses, so Google My Business pages underneath the same account using multiple PO boxes. Then a lot that like I've had that happen to me a couple times in the last few months where I've um, in the last six months where I've had I've tried to register two different PO boxes within the same uh, Google My Business owner account so profile essentially and um, and I've gotten it flagged and I had to re-verify and in 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 one case I just abandoned it altogether and um, re-registered a new business under another profile because it was it was no way for me to verify it 
So I basically lost that one. But it, I mean, it was not a big deal. It happens, guys. So the way the workaround so far to this point has been just to register one Google My Business profile per, uh, or excuse me, My Business account per profile so that you essentially have a different account owner for each one. That's the way that I've been able to get around it. Again, that might they may crack down on that at some point in the very near future. Maybe so. But until then, I'm going to continue exploiting it. Um, and so that's what I recommend you do. You can you can also hire um, rent virtual mailboxes from other places other than the PO box, but those are the cheapest. And so far, they are still working for me. Okay. So uh, again, I do not recommend that you register a bunch of uh, businesses to your home address. I, I I mean, you can, but I wouldn't do it. All right. And the other thing is you don't want to share the same address for multiple businesses. Guys, that's part of the reason I like to use PO boxes because they're cheap enough where even if I've got 10 businesses in the same, like I'm, I've got 10 different lead gen funnels for like, let's say 10 different industries, right? And it's in the same damn city. I can have 10 different PO boxes because the deal is like the, the, the address is going to be the street address of the post office and then you're going to get a box number. So it's going to be like one, two, three main street number 101. And then maybe next time you'll get number two oh, you know, two two oh eight or whatever. My point is, each one of those are each considered a unique address because of the box number makes it unique. Does that make sense? So I mean, you could probably do it with your own home address. Like if if your home address was you know, one two three Maple Street, and you did one two three Maple Street or one two three dash A and one two three dash B, one two three dash C, you could probably get away with that. But I certainly wouldn't recommend it. Again, it's cheap enough to where you can uh, just buy additional boxes, and um, and I like to do that. And and people have asked me before, well, do you continue to rent the PO box after you've received the PO box, or excuse me, the verification card? Yes, I do. I pay for every one of those. P I've got PO boxes that I've been paying for for years, guys. I, re I renew them every year. It's only happened to me twice in my entire digital marketing career that I've had to re-verify via postcard a business listing. It's only happened twice. In uh, you know six or seven years now. However, when it happens, if it happens, I have the ability to retrieve the postcard because I renew the boxes every year, and it's a nominal fee, guys. On for, on in the um, less populated areas, I can get a PO box for a year for about sixty bucks or sixty four dollars, something like that. Per so it's sixty four dollars per year, r roughly. Okay. Um, for the more populated areas, it costs me like one hundred and twenty eight dollars a year. So it's like. It's so inexpensive. It's such a small cost of doing business that I just pay for it. Okay. Okay. Anyways, can I use the very same address for multiple different businesses in the same area city? Note, I live in Denmark. Thank you for your help. Oh, psh, I guess I should have answered that. Uh, I don't know about Denmark. I can't speak for anything in any other foreign country, guys. All I can talk about specifically for local is within the U.S. But I'm quite sure that if I can get away with doing what I'm doing in the U.S., you could probably get away with it in Denmark. You probably get away with a hell of a lot more in Denmark, I'm sure. Um, in, in which case you might, you know, you could possibly use one address and then just, you know, put like that unique identifier, like dash A, dash B, dash C. You could probably get away with that in Denmark. Again, I don't know. I don't have any experience in that market. But in the U.S., um, you know, it's a little bit stricter typically. And, I, and that's why I just use a unique address for each location. Like, in other words, a unique, um, it gets a unique box number, which makes it unique. Okay. All right, cool. Toby, Virginia Surgeons, he says, can you do a hump day hangouts with your students who are killing it rank to rent or uh, Amazon, Shopify, PP call, et cetera, or pay, P, P, uh, yeah, pay for call, et cetera. Um, and I, I asked him this question yesterday, I guess, because I was trying to clarify. He said, yeah, to, by the way, if you're watching Toby, what's up? Uh, he says, yes. Um, should we bring on guest presenters? Well, see, we do that in the mastermind. Um, Toby, that's what we, we bring guest presenters on in the mastermind. We had Clint Butler on, uh, two weeks ago, which was awesome because he did uh, training on page speed, uh, which was awesome because of some of our mastermind members Im implemented what he trained it and uh, what he trained for that session and were able to reduce their page load times to under a second. I think it was like three quarters of a second, which was awesome. Um, anyways, uh, tomorrow we've got our, uh, our very own Wayne Clayton. He's been uh, one of our you know, most engaged mastermind members, and he's had phenomenal success. And he's coming on tomorrow to do, be a guest presenter to talk about prospecting and his unique approach to prospecting um, and landing clients. And he's you know had a lot of experience in media, uh, the the media industry, and so he's got a unique approach that uh, a lot of us in the digital marketing industry haven't seen or heard. 
And so I'm actually really looking forward to having him come on tomorrow to give his presentation and answer questions about how his prospecting method. So again, Toby, we do that kind of stuff in the mastermind. Uh, Hump Day Hangouts is really supposed to be a forum for Q&A. Okay, doesn't mean we can't set up a separate webinar sometime for that, but we'd have to figure out a good angle for it. So yeah, and then we, we'd also have to be careful about giving away the niche or, or, or any of that information because actually I had someone do that in, in the RYS Facebook group. And when he posted the URL, like directly after that, a couple of days later, he got hit with, with, with a ton of spam. So we know that it was someone from our, our own RYS Academy who went and did that. I don't know why they would do that with someone who's trying to help and show how he's doing it. But it's one of the reasons why we try to protect it and keep it inside the mastermind where, where we know most of the people are trustworthy. Yep. Totally agree. And that's why that's in part why we do stuff like that on the mastermind guys, because it's a very, very tight group. Um, and, uh, you know, like an intimate group. So it, it makes it a lot easier. It doesn't mean that there's not people there that can be malicious as well, because there, there certainly can be, but it's, uh, it's less likely. Okay. Dr. Brian McKay says, when building links, is it better to use one and only one variation? For example, www or just HTTP or just the domain.com. I have heard varying advice where you would use all and someone else saying use one every time you build a link. Um, I, you know, honestly, I, I, I've used variations. If I'm like, if I'm, um, if I were to be using spam tools, which I don't anymore at all, uh, you know, I don't ever run them myself, but I would always use variations. So here, here's a good example, Brian. Um, in the recent weeks, I've done several case studies for different YouTube tools. Uh, they're all in the bonus site that I just showcased a minute ago. Um, one of them being Live Rank Sniper and the other one being Rocket Video Ranker Pro. And uh, there's been some spinning and all that kind of for the video descriptions and that kind of stuff, which is, is pretty typical for any sort of spam work. And those are, in my opinion, they're both spam tools. They can be used to not spam, but <laughs> the way that I used them was very intentionally to spam. And uh, because of that, I started doing a lot of spinning and stuff like that again over the last few weeks, which I had gotten away from for a while. And um, so when I create the links for the go in the video description to where I want to direct people to, I like to use all the different variations as you just laid out here. So HTTP, if there's HTTPS as well, if the, the uh, SSL protocol is available, then I'll go ahead and add that one in as well. I'll use the trailing slash with and without the trailing slash. I'll use uh, dub, dub, dub and non dub, dub, dub. So I use a variation of them so that it adds variety and diversity to the video description. In other words, if we've got 15 videos on the same channel, I want the call the URL the call to action URL to be a variation all the time if possible just because it gives more diversity to the thing now as far as the SEO purposes since they all resolve to the same location I don't think it makes much difference but I'd like to hear uh, Marco and um, Hernan's advice or um, input on this please it's just anchor text variation that that's that's why you do that the the destination is usually all the same but you know also you you want to keep that you you might people don't all link the same way you they that's right if, if you go throughout the web like you get a hundred people they're all going to link to a web to a website a different way some will use the dub 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 I I particularly don't anymore because I know it, it'll resolve to the dub 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 anyway yep but I I use I use them all simply because that's what people do on the web it makes absolutely no sense and and whoever is advising that only one variation is actually misguided because yeah. that's not the way that people type. Now, the only time the only time that I would recommend always using the exact same URL format is when you're citing an NAP for a uh, name, address, phone number. So anytime you're going to create or reference or list an NAP somewhere within content or link building or something like that, I would always recommend using the same type of URL uh, just because it's an NAP, right? You want data consistency as much as possible. And the yeah. URL should be what whatever you it shows Google to Google. Business. Yeah, to Google to to link to the website where where they say you know website and you click on it, that's the version that that, that you should use in that one particular case. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I on this case I totally agree with Marco. If you see the big, uh, if you see the that's why we you know we we keep saying that you need to validate the entity and one of the main 
uh, you know, when, when, you, when your website is popular or you're trying to it to appear to be popular, you need to emulate as much as possible human behavior. That's why you need to uh, do things differently from time to time. I mean, different URLs, people will mention your website differently. Maybe they will spell it wrong. As long as the link is a link, you know, uh, we had, I think we had Gary, Dr. Gary came to a mastermind and, you know, he showed how you can get um, links from really powerful websites just because they are misspelled, you know? Yeah. So as long as the URL is pointing correctly to your website, the anchor text could, could be misspelled. You know, it can be semantic mastery or something else or semantic master, as long as the uh, hyperlink is pointing to semanticmastery.com, you know? So yeah, vary it a little bit. That would be my, my intake on it. Very good. Okay, Allah's up again. He says, hi, when the first three to four sites on the Google organic search are not the same ones as in Google three pack, uh, three, the, so the maps pack, uh, does that mean that it's easy to rank in the three, three pack map or the first page of the organic search for that specific niche? Thanks for the help. Um, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to rank in the map. It just means that the maps listings aren't um, the ones that are ranked in maps, their, their, or their on page for their site isn't as good as what, you know, isn't up. It's not good enough to be on the first page. In other words, and, and it doesn't have to just be the on page. It could be a combination of on page or on page and off page, but typically the organic results, it's a different algorithm. There's a lot of overlap between the local algorithm and the organic algorithm. Now it's a lot more closely related now than it used to be. Um, and that was particularly where a lot of that marriage occurred was the pigeon update. If you guys remember that, that was shit. That was probably two years ago now. Um, amazing how time flies. But uh, it, there, there is some overlap there. But like, for example, I'll, uh, I don't ever, I don't care at all about organic rankings anymore for lead gen or for local stuff when I have a physical location available. Um, and it, even if that means I have to black hat the physical location using a PO box, right? That's I don't care about organic anymore at all for lead gen and local stuff only because I know from all my lead gen assets that my call volume dropped for for stuff that was organic only my call volume dropped sixty percent because of the new SERP layout right when I say new it's not new anymore but the SERP layout as it stands today which is four ads typically four ads and in a maps pack so so you go you end up pa going past seven freaking listings before you ever get to the first organic so I can tell you right now the reason I'm, I told I'm telling you this is because I have multiple lead gen sites all over the place that are ranked in maps but they're they're not you know they might be on page two or page three in organic I don't care it doesn't bother me as long because the phone calls are coming from the maps pack or from ads word right? excuse me AdWords. Um, I'm either getting calls from my ads or I'm getting calls from the maps pack. I don't get calls from organic. Very, very rarely do I get calls from organic when a map is displayed for a search query, right? And most, most search queries are going to display. Now I will still target organic for lead gen and local. Uh, like if I'm doing video campaigns, for example, because you can't get a video. Well, I say you can't, um, it's unlikely to get a video above a maps pack anymore for a local term. Okay, and so I still will do spamming with YouTube and stuff like that for organic rankings. But when it comes to uh, websites and stuff, I personally don't care if it if there's a maps pack that shows for the search query, then I'm going to try to rank in the maps pack, not the organic. Okay, so typically when there's a difference between what's showing in maps and what's showing in organic, it's because the site that the 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 site that's ranking in maps but not in organic is speaking or it's more congruent with what the maps algorithm wants though if that makes sense the organic but maybe not as much for the organic and that like i said it could be a common i found that's oftentimes more an on-page issue than an off-page issue but it could be it could be both i'm just saying when personally when i've been able to identify issues where i'm not ranking as good organically as i should be based upon my maps ranking it's a lot of the times for at least in my experience it's been because of on-page issues either over optimization which triggers panda or uh you know just thin again it's just panda in general thin content over optimization uh you know things like excuse me things like that uh you guys got any input on that yeah i would just tell him that he is trying to do local since he went since he talked about the map pack before mm -hmm. right so I'm, I'm thinking he wants his 
the, the way that you do that is to entity. You do the entity. You, you, you validate it, then you push trust and authority and relevance up to the entity. It's called RYS Academy, by the way. That's how, that's how you force all, all of that up to the entity and over to the destination. And you could actually do both, rank in maps and organic. That's what I would do. All right, cool. Um, we're going to keep moving. Let's see who's next. B Belint. Sorry if I mispronounced that. He says, thanks for last week's input. I was rather asking about how to make both RSS and YouTube syndication work for the same network. My idea, I upload a video, unlisted it to YouTube, have it transcribed to make a post to my main site with the additional content. The video is embedded and the title is different. That post with transcription gets syndicated via RSS trigger. I make the video public a bit later on. Because it's public now, the sole video gets syndicated via YouTube upload trigger too. Maybe not to the main blog though. Would that work or still count as duplicate spam? No, that would work, Belint. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. I've said that um, in previous Hump Day Hangouts. That question come, has come up several times, Belint. So you're not the first to ask it. Um, it's okay to post both the video to your channel and to your blog and have them both syndicate to the same network. That's absolutely fine. Where the problem occurs is when people um, have both their YouTube channel triggering their network and their blog and they they uh, upload the video which syndicates to their network and then they just take the video and go embed it in a post on their blog with the same title and usually you know not much different in the video description either and then they post that because Here's the problem. It, it won't hurt your money site, your blog, and it won't hurt your YouTube channel. What it can cause, where it can cause problems is on the network itself, the syndication network, because now you've got two posts that look nearly identical to your network properties because it's the same title, which ends up being the same, uh, you know, the same title, right? And then you have the same video. Um, so especially for like Blogger, Tumblr, and WordPress where there's embeds because that's basically it's going to look like the same post basically other than perhaps maybe some slight differences in text in the description area. But if you're going to change the title and usually make the title more like blog specific, right? Because usually blog post guys are going to have more like, you know, longer tail, more like conversational, natural speech pattern type titles than a YouTube video because YouTube videos are going to usually be succinct keyword driven type titles, right guys? Because we only have, but blog titles are generally going to be more like natural speech patterns, right? And so, if you're going to take your video and also post it to your blog and have both syndicating to the same network, then it's absolutely fine to do so. If you're going to make a, a different title and if you're going to have a video transcribed, you're going to have a much longer description. So it's not going to look like duplicate content on the Web two properties, if that makes sense. So that's absolutely perfectly fine, Belin. And I'm sorry if I misunderstood your question last week. <clears throat> Roy says, got the battle plan and reviewed it. Question, just got a dental client that had to rebrand his practice, dissolved partnership. Uh, okay. So the main practice name has changed to a new name. He then purchased another practice in a different city, i.e. rebranded his practice website as abcdentalgroup.com with the two city locations. Do I just create one Google Plus page for the group.com or different for each location? No. You create a different Google Plus page for each location, Roy. Um, well, I mean, let, let me let me rephrase that. If you're creating a Google brand page, then you can have one brand page and reference both locations. But you're, I understand that if, if you've got, if you're you're talking about, I'm sure you're talking about Google My Business, a, lo a locations page, in which case you want a different page for each location. Okay? Don't there's there there are brand pages and there are locations pages and actually locations pages are no longer Google Plus pages at all they're they're maps pages <laughs> they're not even part of Google Plus anymore does that make sense like if you go in your Google My Business dashboard you access your maps data through maps and your Google Plus page which is now just a brand page there is no location local version of the brand page anymore that I'm aware of anyways because you edit your details on maps okay. Um, so anyways, there might still be a locations Google Plus page, but I don't know what the use of it's for. I don't know how it's valuable at all anymore, to be honest with you. Everything's now being, for the loc local part of it, it's all being handled through maps. Okay. But it is, uh, so for that, yeah, go ahead and create a different locations page for each. Do I need to modify the battle plan for the purchase practiced since it already has G Plus established? Uh, a bit confused on how to apply the battle plan, the battle plan to this situation. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Um... The purchase practice, since it already has a G plus established, 
I mean, if it's already got a locations page, um, is if if it's got, you're going to have to rebrand all that stuff, right? I mean, I think that's what you're saying. You said that he rebranded his practice with the two locations. Roy, I'm not really following all of the uh, parts of this question, but if if you have if if the other business that he purchased had a Google My Business page already, and now he purchased it. If he's rebranding everything, what I would recommend, especially if that other business was established and had any sort of, um, you know, decent rankings in 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 Google and or Maps, right? If it was if it was ranking, you're going to have to rebrand it. If it's rebranded, I'm assuming it's going to have to be rebranded. Uh, in which case, what you'd want to do is don't. I wouldn't set up a new listing because it's it's going to have the same address unless like the phone number changed the the name and the phone number and the website like if if all of those data points change then yes I would set up a new business I would I would close uh, say that the other business was permanently closed and then create a new listing but you'd have to make sure that the only thing that was the same out of all the data points between name address phone number and URL is the address right you'd have to have the different brand name different phone number different URL and and then you could mark that other places close and then start a new GMB page, which is what I would do if those other conditions were met. However, if the phone number, the physical location, and um, uh, and per perhaps the web address and or the, the the brand name or whatever are the same, if 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 you don't have all those other unique properties within those four data points there, then you're going to have to do a citation cleanup, which would be going out and basically correcting all of the old citations to list the new uh, data for the business. Does that make sense? And that's a pain in the ass, but that's what you're going to have to do. And so I recommend highly that you go, uh, if you guys can get a, the link ready, it's um, semanticmastery.com forward slash Loganix, that's L-O-G-A-N-I-X. And there's a citation cleanup service there that can handle that for you. Well, provided it's in the U.S., they do it. I mean, I, they might do it in other areas, but I don't know. Um, Loganix Citation Cleanup Service in America in the U.S. is really really good. They get about a seventy percent success rate, and they're very very thorough. So that's what I would recommend doing. But like I said, if you can, if you're going to rebrand it and you get a new URL and you're going to change the phone number, then I would set up a new listing altogether because that's going to be a lot um, less of a headache than trying to fix old citations. That's that's just a real pain in the ass, and that's why I just outsource that all the time. All right, we're going to keep moving. It's on the, um, sorry, Bradley, but it's on the events page, uh, semanticmaster.com for flash organics. Okay. Um, if you want to follow up, Roy, with us in one of like our groups, Facebook or something, and we, with some more detail, like uh, where it can be explained a little bit further, we might be able to help you out a little bit better. Um, I feel like I wasn't able to answer that question properly because I don't have all the details. Mark's next. He says, hi, hi guys. Hope all is well. My question is about your local Kingpin product. I'm starting to get somewhere now with SEO, but it does take forever, and that's okay. I accept that's how SEO goes and just get on with it, but I like the idea of starting with AdWords and then adding SEO lead gen later. I'm not asking for AdWords advice. That's what the training is for, and I've bought your products before, so I know it'll be legit. My question is how did it or how is it going? Are you able to generate enough quality leads for your client? I work with contractors. If that helps, not looking for specific advice, just your opinion on how well AdWords works. I, I'm crushing it with AdWords, guys. I mean, uh, yeah, it's my my profit is a lot smaller on my AdWords leads because I pay for the clicks and everything. But they're so much easier to set up, and I can I can I mean that's that's what Local Kingpin is about. Mark is about setting up uh, like literally, you can set up a lead gen funnel and have traffic and be receiving leads within 48 hours. Um, I mean, and that I mean, you could do it within a day, but I I say 48 hours because it usually takes me two days to set up a lead gen asset, um, and that's it. Well, it used to take me two days if when I was new, but now I've got a lot of stuff templatized. Like you know, I've got click funnels funnels that are all already all set up. They're generic funnels. I can just clone the funnel and then go in and swap out details. Um, and I've got working procedures set up for a lot of stuff now, so I have like checklists that I can go through. Um, and that kind of stuff that makes it just really simple for me to set up a funnel, uh, a um, lead gen asset, and turn on ads. And it's like, you know, literally within a few hours of you submitting your first ad, you can get uh, start generating traffic. So the main thing with Mark, if you go through Local Kingpin, 
um, which I highly recommend, for, especially for contractors, because that's that's my market is contractors. And and I I mean I I love being able to generate leads with AdWords now. I don't know why I was so scared of AdWords for so long, but now I absolutely love it because it's just the speed with which I can generate. And here's the thing: what I love about setting up AdWords funnels, guys, is I can determine right off the bat, right away, where where my money keywords are. The, the 80 20 rule. 100% applies to AdWords. And uh, there's a book by Perry Marshall called The 80-20 Sales and Marketing. Go get the damn book. Buy it on Kindle, whatever. Pick it up, read it, because it is absolutely 100% correct. When it comes to AdWords, especially for the local lead, uh, lead gen funnels, 80% um, of your traffic is going to come from 20% of your keywords. That's it. So all this shit that we do in SEO where we scrape hundreds of keywords and we we build silos and we have to do all this content and we have to properly silo the content. We got to do all this internal linking. All that's great. It, it can pay off. There's no doubt. But so many of those keywords, uh, you know, are, are long tail and stuff like that where you're going to get very little to no traffic from. Now, cumulatively, they all build to make your site stronger and more relevant, which will generate more traffic. So there is a there's certainly a reason to do all that. But my point is we go through like harvesting these great big keyword lists and all that stuff. And with AdWords, with especially the way that I show how to do it using alpha beta campaign structure, you can like literally go in, do your keyword research in about a half an hour. The main point for that is generating or building a negative keyword list because you ought to already know what your main money keywords are for the project that you're working on. So really the, the keyword research is about building a negative keyword list. But then you plug in your money keywords, you add your uh, negative keyword list, use modified broad match, and then you let AdWords tell you where your money's your your money keywords are. And within a month, you can identify your top keywords where eighty percent of your traffic is going to come from, and I guarantee you, it'll be twenty percent of your keywords. And then you then those are the keywords that you focus your SEO efforts on. So I, as I've I mentioned, I think in at the uh, local Kingpin training. I'm not starting any SEO projects from scratch anymore. Like I'm not starting new projects with SEO as my main promotional type anymore. I'm not doing it unless it's YouTube spam. Um, Cause I, I just not going to do it from now on. I'm doing AdWords first to prove my keywords and prove my, uh, you know, prove that it's, it's converting and that kind of stuff. And then I'll invest my time and effort into SEO for the keywords that I've identified as my winners. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, I, I really no, I, I really like that approach, Bradley. The the fact that you're getting speed, that you're getting, I mean, you're iterating on a process on a project, and you're you know you're failing fast. Yep. You're you're finding out you're weeding out the keywords that are not going to work, that they're not going to convert, and then you're focusing on on the keywords that that are. And I think that's really the key when it comes to paid advertising, is that you get data so much faster that your business can grow a lot more because if you have to be waiting six months um, to get data on your business, it's, you know, uh, money, uh, time is money. Yeah. And if you're doing SEO, if you're doing SEO and waiting all of that time, then you're uh, spending all of that money that you could be earning because you're failing fast on your, on your projects. So once you have that, once you have the process in place, uh, you can still do SEO, you know, and you know that it's going to pick up, you know, three to six months down the road, maybe a year down the road, and you still do SEO so that when that hits or when you're getting a decent amount of, of organic traffic, uh, you know that the funnel is converting. So yeah. there's basically no top to how much you can scale. It all depends on the market that you're in. The market will tell you how much you, you can scale or sell a product, sell a service, whatever that is. But that's basically why I like paid advertising combined with SEO because, again, you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. That's correct. Like one way or the other. Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. Think about this. With, uh, you, you know, you could spend months working on a project um, and find out that, you know, for SEO, I mean, you could spend months working on trying to build the SEO up for a project, set of keywords, whatever, and find out that it just – it's not profitable. It's not working. And now you've you spent months of effort and time on it, right? And, and probably money as well. But with AdWords, you can prove it very, very quickly whether it's going to be profitable or not. If you can make it profitable when you're paying for the clicks, then it'll be profitable for SEO. There's no doubt because you won't be paying. I mean, you, you, you do pay for those clicks with time and effort 
and somewhat money too, but you, uh, you know what I mean? But it, it's, it's an indirect, you're paying indirectly, not directly for clicks. And so uh, again, that's, that's number one. Number two, the other part of that mark is why I love AdWords uh, for local lead gen now is because if you do register a mailbox and it can be a PO box, it doesn't even have to be verified guys. You can register local addresses and set up AdWords campaigns and use the locations extension. The locate you hearing this, and you don't even have to have a verified address, and it will will still show the locations extension in your ad, and it will also uh, if you've got your ad set up properly and you're you're at the top of the search um, or the top of the ads pack, which has to do with quality score, um, you'll end up in the maps. The, uh, an ad in the first maps position not not necessarily in a three pack in, on mobile devices if you have call only ads set up you can show up in the mo three pack on mobile devices but on desktop tip I haven't seen I haven't been able to get any of my ads to show up in the three pack on desktop uh, but I have been able to get almost virtually all of my ads to show up in the first position in maps so when somebody clicks on the more results it'll show my ad at the very tops of the results when that page expands if that makes sense and so, and that's the thing. And 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 again, with uh, locations extensions, you can verify. You don't even need to, ver excuse me, verify the address. I know that because I one of the lead gen funnels I'd set up for local kingpin. I uh, Google was not sending me the verification postcard, and so I went ahead and said, screw it, I'm going to continue with the project. And I ran. I went ahead and uh, added the locations extension, and you have to link it to your Google My Business profile, or and then select whatever page. And I linked that page to it. And I thought, well, let's just check it and see if it works. And damn if it didn't show my uh, maps extension in the ad, even though it was an unverified address, which is awesome, right? So I just wanted to give you guys that little nugget. Local Kingpin, guys, is a great, great course. If you're doing lead gen and you're not using AdWords, you're crazy, in my opinion. Okay. All right, Herovic, uh, he says, hi, I have a question regarding the battle plan. How is it different than the IFTTT Academy, RYS, or the Mastermind? Does it add something new or is it a blueprint that in, incorporates all of them? Thank you. Well, uh, a $20 PDF certainly can't incorporate IFTTT, RYS, and the Mastermind. Um, be nice if it could, but it would be an awfully big PDF if we did. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Have any mind the depth of uh, semantic mastery and the three years <laughs> within yeah. Mastermind and all of yeah, the PDF. nuggets that are <laughs> RYS? It's going to be long as. Yeah, that would be small. very. Um, Herovic, the, 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 the battle plan is basically the processes that, that, that we use for working on any digital assets, whether they're established or they're just being launched. It's the same process, just the series of steps that we take, um, you know, for, for setting up the networks and link building and citations and press releases and like all the different steps in the order, in the order that we do them. And it's the same process that we've used for years now. And it, all we did was just put it in a simple format, including links to the products and services that we use for that kind of stuff, uh, which are and, and most of them are our own services anyways, because we developed all those services specifically because we use them. <laughs> we only made our services available to others because we kept getting asked for it. We had developed our services for us originally. Okay, and so that, that's what we, that's all it is. It's very, very simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. Some people wished it was more complicated, and that's why I said, you know, I don't know, stand on your head while you perform the tasks. I don't know. <laughs> can, can I add something more to this? Please do. Yeah. Our battle plan is a blueprint. A blueprint is used to build a house. That's the right. blueprint does not build the house for you. You have to follow the blueprint and go and build the house using whatever tools are necessary for the construction of whatever it is that you want to make of that house according to the to, to the blueprint that, that you're using. Th I mean, I, I can't put it any clearer or, or plainer than that. Get a blueprint on what you're supposed to do and, and how you're supposed to do it, not why you're, you're supposed to do it, and definitely it's, it's not going to get done for you. I, I, hope, I hope that clarifies yeah. everything. So again, it's just it's very simple, uh, heroic. It's just it's the process that we use, and and I I like simple. That's why we made it simple because it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. If you want to learn more about like uh, syndication academy and syndication networks, you're certainly welcome to join. 
RYS as well. Uh, Mastermind is our top level, like, you know, coaching group, um, and that you're certainly welcome to join that as well. Next question, how does the Rocket Video Ranker differ from a Live Rank Sniper? Can we emulate its functionality and do it manually? What's the principle behind it? Uh, yeah, they're two different things. Live Rank Sniper is really a keyword poking tool, and Peter Drew, the developer, even calls it that. So it's not like that's a secret. It's, it's mainly a poking tool. You can use it to identify keywords, to test keywords with YouTube scheduled live events. So you don't even need to have a video, right? Live Rank Sniper doesn't even require you to have a video. It's just a software that can that automates the uh, process of setting up YouTube uh, scheduled live events. And because they're indexable scheduled live events, they will index without even a video. They're just placeholders in the index. And then once you have identified keywords, you can, if you want, uh, stream directly to those scheduled live events through Live Rank Sniper. It's ma it's a manual process and it takes time. It's I say manual. It's semi-automated in that you only have to click the mouse a couple times for it to start doing its thing. But then you have to wait for the software to run, uh, stream the video, and then it, it, will, it will end and then you have to stream, uh, you know, click the mouse a few times to go stream to the next scheduled live event that's ranking. So I don't recommend it for that. I recommend using it specifically for identifying keywords, using it as a poking tool, okay? If you want a, 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 a tool that works seamlessly with Live Rank Sniper, I would say Hangout Millionaire, which is Peter Drew's upgrade. Uh, like that's his top level, well, it's currently his top level SEO uh, video marketing software, but he's he's coming out. Well, I, I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> so that's a great tool as well, though. It works really good with Live Rank Sniper. Uh, Rocket Video Ranker is a different animal altogether. Rocket Video Ranker is freaking fabulous. It's, it's a loophole as far as I'm concerned. Um, the way that it works, but it basically you upload, you just do uploads with Rocket Video Ranker, but it automates uploading multiple videos at one time very, very quickly in a very unique fashion. And the way that it works, uh, it's it's very unique. I don't, I don't know how long it's going to last or even why it works the way that it does, but it works really, really well right now. I know because I used a shit ton of, <laughs> I used a lot of it, uh, used it a lot, excuse me, over the last two weeks. And in the case study, by the way, just so you know, the case study in here, look, this is it, guys. I mean, I got 11, but there's got to be two and a half hours worth of content in this case study alone, exactly how I use it. And it's great because you can set up digital assets, uh, YouTube channels. You can turn YouTube channels into little, uh, to digital assets very quickly using this. And I even talk about in the strategy session here, in what's the, the very last video here, it's called What's Next. I talk very specifically about a strategy that you can, uh, hire virtual assistants to run the software for you and literally create dozens and dozens of these digital assets, uh, YouTube channel assets, and you can monetize them. And there's multiple ways to do that as well. And I talk about that in the case study. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, Herovic, if you don't have either one of them, go buy the PDF, um, the battle plan, and you should have access to this bonus study case, uh, excuse me, this bonus membership site. And if you do, then just go through, watch the first couple of videos of each one of the case studies and you make the decision as to what is best for your business. Okay. They're available for you to watch so that you can make that decision. All right. We only got about eight minutes left. So let's roll through these next few. Ivan says, Hey guys, I embedded a Google my maps in an article on my website and I shared it to my tier one network. If I had something in the iframe, will it syndicate automatically on the network or do I have to resubmit my article via my RSS feed? Yeah, no, it, well, wait a minute. Yeah, if you're updating the iframe, it should update everywhere because it's the same iframe. Am I correct, Marco, or no? That's correct. The iframe will show whatever is in the source. Okay. Now, if, if but hang on. If it, if he's changing the iframe, the way that it's struck it's structured in the website, it's not going to up, update everywhere else. Yeah. Right. So, but uh, but I think that well, uh, Ivan, if you're listening, maybe you can comment. But I think that what he's saying is, if he if uh, if he adds something, well, yeah, I don't know. He adds something to the code that's not gonna resyndicate. But if you change what's within the iframe, right, then it could. Like if you change something uh, within the Google My Maps, you know, like if you add another marker, for example, that will you know automatically show everywhere. But if you add, I don't know whatever piece of code to that iframe, that's not going to syndicate. Yeah. Am I correct? Am I right? 
that, yeah, if that's you, correct. If you, you add something to, like past the closing iframe tag, then that's not going to update across the properties, right? Right, 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 right. right. And that's if that's what you mean, Ivan. If you're trying to add stuff like beyond the closing iframe tag, then no, you'd have to you'd have to issue a new um, or publish a new post. For be, here's the thing, guys: you can't publish a post and have it syndicate to your network, and then go back and edit the post on your money site, and then expect it to edit all the posts that it was syndicated to as well. It doesn't work like that. You'd have to go delete the original posts and then. Uh, Basically, publish, republish the new, the new, the post as a new post in order for it to trigger the RSS feed to resend or to syndicate as a new post. Right? There is a plugin that you can use uh, in WordPress. Um, it's called uh, Republish Old Posts. Funny enough, right? Uh, republish Old Posts, and I'll say WP or WordPress. That's it right there. This plugin right here, you can use this plugin. Um, to republish old posts, we'll reinsert them into your RSS feed, which will trigger a new syndication. You can do something like that if you wanted. But yeah, I mean, if you're changing something within the iframe, it's going to update everywhere that the iframe was syndicated to. If you're changing something outside of the closing iframe tag, then no, you'd have to force the syndication all over again. Okay. Says by the way, my comment on the Semantic Mastery sales page. Wow, I was surprised. It's like having a page one position one on Google. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Ivan. David says, uh, when creating a branded network, is it necessary to use proxies for any account work? Once a network is in place, how much lift does using stacks of interlinked Google properties add? Well, first of all, is is it necessary to use proxies for any account work? No, it's not necessary. Um, I recommend if you're building a ton of networks that you have at least five dedicated proxies anyways that you can cycle through. Um, and and I, I recommend, and, and this is covered in the training, David, but I recommend never trying to create more than two accounts with the same IP within 24 hours. Okay? So, if, again, you can do it with your own IP. It's fine. You don't need any proxies at all as long as you're not, and when I say, I mean, don't try creating two accounts on the same account platform. In other words, don't try to create two more than two tumblers, for example, or two Gmail addresses within 24 hours from the same IP. It will flag your IP, and it, trust me, it'll cause problems. If you're going to be doing a lot of building, which again, I don't recommend you do, you should outsource that or, or just go to Surfspace and buy networks. But if you're going to be doing a lot of that kind of stuff, then I recommend that you have at least five proxies, dedicated proxies. You want them to be clean. Dedicated means you only are using them. Don't get shared proxies. And I also highly recommend if you're going to be building a lot of networks that you use Browsio. Seriously. If you're going to be, I mean, I got it open right here. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I got all these uh, Browsio, I've, I've got this open all the time now, guys. It's insane because it's, um, it's a great, great tool. Okay. Once a network is in place, how much lift does using stacks of interlinked Google properties add? It depends, David. Depends on if the Google stacks are created properly. Depends on how they're done. Depends on which keywords. There's just so many variables there. If they're done correctly, you can um, expect a substantial increase in rank. Okay, but if if you don't do it correctly, then uh, then you know I I, I can't speak. For, I, it might not help at all. In fact, it might even cause problems. I don't know. It just depends on if they're done right or not. It also depends on how much risk he's willing to take uh, as far as hammering the dry stack properties. Yep. Okay, Ken says, um, we're almost done, guys. We only got a couple minutes left. He says, I'm looking for clarity on ranking for local. I have a client that is a franchise. There are four locations within seven to ten miles of each other, so I don't think it would be reasonable to try and rank all of them for the same keyword, franchise name, city, state. Um the same keyword since it would be I'm, I'm sorry guys I just was rereading that since I would be competing against myself in each location I can just see it now the management in each location would be pissed off if I wasn't ranking them at the top of the three pack I do understand that there would be overlap and so do they the only differentiating factor to each location is different zip codes some minor overlap oh wow so it's the same City and everything, huh? Power Suggest Pro and the Keyword Planner don't show any search volume for franchise name, city, city, state. Yeah, well, it would. I mean, it probably wouldn't. Um, well, if it's franchise, yeah, maybe because as a franchise name, right? But what about the keyword instead of franchise name? 
Uh, anyways, I don't think so either. I, do I go ahead and only focus on franchise city state zip code for each location? Then Big G will pick up the fact of the searcher's location. So how would you suggest going after this? What would you do? Ken, that's a really good question. Um, I've never had to experience that, so it would take me some thought. We don't have time for me to go. I mean, like, I'd literally have to think about this. Ken in any of our – he's not in our mastermind, is he? I don't think he is. Mm -hmm. Ken, this would be an awesome question for us to dissect in mastermind. I sure wish you were in there, buddy. Um, let me – Take a let me think about this one a little bit, Ken, uh, and we can revisit it next week. Sorry if you can't wait till then, but because um, otherwise, join the mastermind because we got a mastermind tomorrow. This would be a great question to dissect, but otherwise, you're gonna have to wait till next week. And I'm gonna make a note right now. If I can just add that that right now, the 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 main factor for uh, three pack or for what ap appears to the searcher is proximity. I mean that that's without question what what, what the main factor. I mean, it, especially it's for mobile testing. If if you're on mobile, yeah, it's and you're talking about nearly seventy percent of people right now who are who are searching on mobile. But I I, I was just doing something on that last last week and and sharing it with someone that proximity yeah. seems to be the overriding factor. I mean, before anything else, Google will pick up proximity. Yeah, so Ken, again, if you're a mastermind um, or if you want, um, you should join. <laughs> and I'm not saying that for any other reason other than this would be a really good question to really dig into. But otherwise, I've got a note. Um, I'll think about this a little bit, maybe consult with Marco a bit, and then we'll have a kind of a concise answer for you next week. Okay. All right, I'm just going to read Wayne's comment really quickly, and then we got to wrap it up, guys, because i got to go. Uh, he says, word on the street that you are sharing something tomorrow on Mastermind that will elevate elevate our business. Is something special planned for the next Mastermind? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes. It's this guy named Wayne Clayton who's going to be on tomorrow sharing some of his expertise uh, in prospecting and dealing with um, clients and his process of determining how much money they have to spend, what their goals are, and all that kind of stuff. I was super impressed with a post that he made in one of the Facebook groups. Um one of our Facebook groups about a particular method that he uses whenever he's prospecting and pitching clients or at least asking questions of the clients, uh, of prospects, excuse me. And uh, and it was really detailed and I was super impressed. So I reached out to Wayne and asked him if he'd come on and be a guest presenter for the mastermind um, to share some of his stuff. And so I'm actually really looking forward to it in, in part because uh, we are in Semantic Mastery, we're really ramping up our um, something on the side that we're working on that's going to re be requiring a lot of prospecting work and just a little, uh, you know, m maybe, maybe in the near future, there's going to be a full on full blown prospecting course coming out from us because, uh, that's something that I'm working on right now. So I'm really anxious to hear what Wayne is, uh, Wayne's got because some of that might even get included in what, um, what's, what will be coming out with our prospecting course in the, in the future. So anyways, Hopefully, uh, anybody's in not has is not in our mastermind. It'd be a good time to join. So go to mastermind.semanticmastery.com if you want to find out more about that. Otherwise, we'll see everybody next week. So bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all. Bye, later. guys. Bye.